Pode ficar. Progress. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you guys? Uh, how are you? Very well. Hey, brother, okay. how are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm good. How are you, sir? We don't see you, sir. Yeah, you're going to see me in a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So let's um, continue where we stopped. Hi, Professor. Hi, Andrew. All right. So let's continue where we stopped. Um, I think, um, Ling, did we answer this question already? Number 12? Yes. Which one? Which one of the following? Oh, I think we are already finished the 11, right? Oh, mobile phone, yeah. That is yeah, Wi-Fi setting. The answer is setting. Yeah, so number 12, Ling, number 12. Okay. Which one of the following this device is likely to have least among almost of storage place? Uh, um, phone, mo mobile phone, mobile phone, mobile phone, <laughs> mobile phone. Why, why, why mobile phone? A phone storage is more than those. It's very small, right? Yeah. So let's see here. All right. Mm. So a mobile phone, right, is, yes. you can say it's the same thing as a smartphone, right? Yes. Uh, most mobile phones today can do a lot of uh, different um, can offer different services, right? Besides just talking on the phone, right? So there's a lot of things you can do on the phone. Um, so with the phone, right? With the phones, we have two major, uh, you know, I guess two major types of phones. Um, we have Apple phones and we have Android phones, right? Two kinds of phones we have, um, the major phones we have in the market. Uh, types 
default mobile phones. All right, so. What is going on? You somebody wants to play some music? Should we stop the class and listen to music? What's going on? Come on, guys. All right, so let's see. So we have um we have iPhone. So when you see an iPhone, right, how do you recognize an iPhone app? Or let's just say iPhone apps, right? Yeah. Okay, so if we look at this example, it's a bit too small. Okay, right here. All right, so, so this is an iPhone, right? The iPhone apps are very unique to iPhone. Um, so when you look at these different icons you see here, um, Lynn, yeah. this icon is for what? Do you know? Do you use an iPhone, Lynn? Yes. Safari. Okay, so this, this is icon for is for what? Searching. This Safari. is for the browser. Yeah. For the browser. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, do you have an iPhone? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, this icon here. This icon here is obviously tells you it's settings, right? Right here. Yeah. So the different icons on the phone, you know, I uh, will tell you if it's an iPhone, if it's an Android. So an Android phone, Android apps. All right, so when you look at an Android phone, you're probably gonna look like that. Let me hide this stuff here, right? On an Android, you're gonna see, um, you're gonna see Google, Gmail, Google Drive, because Android is made by Google, yes. right? Android phones are made by Google, or, or should I say the Android operating system, right? Is based on, it's a Google product, and iPhones are Apple products, right? Mm. Okay. So if we go back here, we're going to see that uh, we have Apple products. It says if it's an Apple product, it will use some version of Apple's mobile operating system. Right? Can you guys see that? Yeah. Apple's mobile operating system is called iOS. IOS, right? Mm. And the, so we have the so we have the Android and iOS, and those are like the most common. So if it's tablets or smartphones, um, it's going to be Android or iOS. And you know we all have Android or iOS phones or mobile devices, right? Okay. So of course, when you look at phones. Right, when you look at mobile phones, um, and Juman, the mobile phones have keyboards and tab and mouse? Uh, yes, yeah, mo um, no. Mobile phone, if I, uh, I, mobile phone have keyboard, but it, um, it's uh, phone desktop or it's screen, uh, another, not another keyboard, separate keyboard. Okay, so the keyboard is is built into the phone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's built into the phone. Android phone keyboard, right? So when we look at the keyboard, we can see that. Uh, where is it? All right, so something like that, right? When you pull up your phone, you're going to see that it pulls up the keyboard, something like that, right? It pulls up the keyboard, and then you can type. How about mouse? There's no mouse. No. Right? The mouse is your finger or your thumb. You use your finger, just like this, this picture here, you use your finger or your thumb, right, to navigate the phone. That's how we use it. Use your finger or your thumb, all right? So that's what it's talking about. 
in some of these different options here. So when we talk about the memory and the storage, right? Um, let's look at this section here. This section says, uh, mobile devices use solid state memory. Solid state memory for phone storage, for the apps and the data. And sometimes you can have as much as 256 gigabytes for the iPhone, right? Uh, most mobile devices have about 64 gigabytes or 125, 128 gigabytes. So the storage, you see what it says here, the storage may be limited. That is, you don't have a lot. So if you have a phone and you have a lot of items or files, pictures that you want to store, well, what do we do? And then where will you store your files if you have a lot of files and pictures? Where do you store them? Yeah. Anna, were you there? Photos? Say it again. Uh, uh, please say the question again. If you have a lot of, if you have a lot of uh, pictures, right? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear yeah, me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So if you have a lot of pictures, where do you store all your pictures? Photos folder. Get on, on your phone. Yes. So, so your phone is big enough to handle all that stuff? iCloud. We can put iCloud. No. Okay, so I can you can put... Memory card. Okay, you can use a memory card, memory card or you can put it on the iCloud, right? Yeah, yes. Okay, so those are the options that we know. Let me kind of... Let me minimize this a little bit here so I can see what I'm doing here. One second. Okay, so what it says right here, what it says here, if the space is limited, then you might want to consider external storage, external storage, such as the cloud or memory cards or flash cards, uh, uh, flash drives, okay? Okay. All right. So let's go back to that question down there. So, which one of the following devices is likely to have the least amount of storage space? Now, when you look at your workstation or your computer or laptop, May, what is the um, size of your, do you have a laptop, May, or is it a, a desktop? Oh. May, are you on a laptop or on a desktop? Laptop. Okay, if you're on a laptop, yes. If you're on a laptop, I want you guys to look for the hard drive size of your of your laptop. If I go to my files here, right, on my Windows, if I go to my C drive, I click on this PC, I can see that I have four seventy five gigabytes on my computer. So what do you guys have on your computer? What's the size of your drive? Alex, do you see your drive size? What do you have? Yeah, uh, I have uh, uh, 101 for the C drive. 101 gigabytes? Yeah. That's, that's, not, that's not a lot. Right? No, that's really not a lot. So you have 101 GB. Mm -hmm. GB, gigabyte. Yeah. yeah, that's not a lot. Uh, Couch, what do you have? 237 gigabytes. Okay. All right, so it's going to tell you there what you have for the size. So your computer or laptop certainly has more space, right, more storage than your phone, right? So you can't store everything on your phone. 
So it makes sense to store it on an external drive or in the cloud. Google has G, uh, Google has Google Drive for your Android, and on the phone, on your on your iPhone, you have the iCloud. All right. So that's what he's talking about there. So the mobile phone certainly has the least amount of storage space. Uh, let's see a couple more things today about mobile phones, if I can show you guys a few more things. Um, okay. Okay, well, let's, let's, look, let's look at this part also. Um, so we have other phones so besides your, well, I don't know if, I don't know how common it is anymore, but we have, has anybody ever seen a BlackBerry phone? A BlackBerry, right? Arch, you have a BlackBerry phone before? Uh, no, but I've seen that BlackBerry phone. It's very old yeah, phone, so right? BlackBerry, I think a BlackBerry looks like this, right? Yeah. Yeah, BlackBerry, actually BlackBerry is the only phone, the only mobile phone that has an actual keyboard, right? Yes. It has an actual keyboard that is attached to it. It's a very tiny, something like this, right? It's a very tiny keys. I don't know how you type on it, you know, very tiny keys. If your fingers are very fat, how do you type on a BlackBerry? But that's an option. Um, so right here, uh, what we just talked about, you interact with your phone using the touch screen, right? Use your finger on the touch screen. Okay. So there's no mouse. So you know we all use phones. So you know it's not a, it's not a, it's not a lot of surprising things that we're going to find here. But we know that the storage is not a lot. Okay. All right, uh, here's the question here. Is that a tablet or a smartphone? So how do we know what a tablet is or how do we know a smartphone? One, two, what's the difference? One, two, are you there? No? Yes, I am there. So what's the difference between a smartphone and a on a tablet? Uh, I think a tablet, uh, we cannot put in their SIM card to call. I think so. Okay. So you can't call. You can't, you can't call. You can't make a phone call with a tablet. Yes. Right? Yes. And um, it's definitely, if you look here, the size, right? Yes. A phone cannot be as big as a tablet. That's going to be, a, how do you put that to your ears? That's going to be a problem, right? So the size is also, um, it's also, the ta uh, so when you look at the size, right? When you compare the size of a tablet and a phone, uh, that's a huge difference there, okay? So, all right, let's go on. Okay. All right, next question. Abu Syed, can you can you see this question number 13? Yes, sir, I see it. Uh, you are setting up a new Wi-Fi uh, connection on your Android phone. Uh, what step do you take after turning on Wi-Fi? Uh, Past I... So, yeah, so give me some options there. <clears throat> uh, uh, you want to set up your Wi-Fi on your phone, on your Android phone, right? Um, so we have to, it depends on how you set up a, an Android phone, right? Do you verify the wireless capabilities first? Do you enter the wireless password? 
Do you verify the internet connection? Do you locate the SSID? Internet. What is SSID? SSID. Go ahead. Go ahead. Abu Sayyid, go ahead. Uh. Well, it's hard to know what the answer is if you don't read the book, right? So we have to look at the steps. We uh. have to look at the steps um, that are involved in setting up. So let's go to um, setting up. Okay, so right here, let's look at setting up setting up wireless network connections. Let's see what happens there. All right, so right here, it tells us about when you're setting up your phone. So you go to read you go to read this chapter so you get the details. Because how you set up a Android phone is different from how you set up an iPhone, right? It's, it's kind of, it's a little bit different. So right here, it tells you what to do. It says, if you look at this section here, right? After verifying that your device supports wireless, you want to turn on Wi-Fi, right? So you turn on Wi-Fi. Uh, on the iPhone, you tap settings to open the settings app. So it depends on the phone. You have to read. Uh, you have to read this section here, so you know how uh, you set it up. But um, most people know how to set it up, right? I mean, once you get your phone, you know what to do. But for the question and the answers, you have to look at this section of the book to know what it's talking about, right? So. So, so these are some steps, right? Some steps that you have to take here, right? Um, actually, right here, if I look at this section here, it says the first thing to do when setting up a wireless connection is to verify, verify that your device has wireless capabilities. Now, every phone has wireless, right? But it says that that's the first thing you want to do. You verify that the phone has wireless. Yeah. If it doesn't have wireless, then the phone is useless. Actually, uh, well, yeah, I think so, right? It's a useless phone. What do you need a phone for without, without wireless? Uh, it's like a uh, kiss, kiss hand, handle phone. Yeah, exactly. So right here it says nearly all mobile devices support Wi-Fi, but you need to verify. So it looks like the first thing you want to do there is to verify that your device has wireless capabilities. If we go down to the question, right? Yeah. What do you think? A, B, C, or D? Uh, interior wireless password, B. We just looked at it right yeah, now, no. Abu Saeed. No. Yeah, verify the internet connection. Verify the internet. What? Yeah. We just looked at it right now, yeah? Locate. Uh, less capabilities. Less capability. Look at it right here. Verify. The first thing, the first thing to do. The first thing to do. When setting up a wireless connection is to verify that your device has wireless capabilities. So let's confirm, let's confirm from the answer. So that question is question what? Question 13. All right, so let's see question 13 in the appendix. Chapter three, question 13. All right, what's it? The... All right, look at it there. So what's the answer? Low, uh, low K S S I D. Look at S S I D. So, so okay. Let's see. The, let's see all the steps. The proper. It says the proper. Capability. The proper steps. Wi-Fi right? capability. Wireless capabilities. First. So the first thing is to do what? All less capability. No, no, what's the first thing? 
Keep a step in order and verify. Turn on Wi Fi. Turn on Wi Fi, Lucas. Turn on Wi Fi. Right? Then you locate the SSID. Then you enter the password and verify the connection. So what is what is SSID? What is SSID? Mm. Ling, what is SSID? I don't know. The name of a new the name of a pizza? Maybe the password? The password is SSID. Like a social security ID. <laughs> social security. Social security number. Um, so let's look at what Wi-Fi SSID. I'm sure you know what it is. Maybe you don't, you don't know the name, but I'm sure you know what it is. So here's an example of Wi-Fi of SSID, right? Look at that. When you want to connect your the name of your wireless, mm -hmm. the name of your wireless is the SSID, oh. right? So if you come if you come to my house and you want to connect, to my, you're going to say, well, what you you know you have to look on your phone, right, for my SSID. So you have different names here: Starbucks, Wi-Fi, Term, FW, whatever, whatever, right? You have different names for. So that's your SSID. You have to know what your SSID ID is, and then you can connect to it. It's right? like Xfinity version. Yeah, it depends on what the name is. It can be, you know, whatever your name of your Wi-Fi is. Xfinity, whatever, Netgear, Netgear, or it might be a name that you made up for yourself, some, some random name, but it's the name of your Wi-Fi connection. That's the SSID. <laughs> Right, so everyone has everyone has you know that. So I'm sure you know what that is. You may not know what the name is, but that's what the name is. The technical name is SS. What does SSID stand for? Uh, let's see what SSID stands for. It's a it's a long. Let's see what the name stands for. Um, where is it? SSID. Right there, service. Set identifier. May you see that? Yes. Yes. Service. Service set, set identifier. Identifier. Mm -hmm. SSID. That is what we call the name of your Wi-Fi connection, right? All right. Uh, Wi-Fi account name. I I can call it. I say it. Say it again. Wi-Fi account uh, name. I open a Wi-Fi. I when I get a Wi-Fi connection, mm, then I uh, put up the Wi-Fi account name. It's called SSID. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So the name of your it may not be it may not be the same thing as the account name, but the name that you register as the yes. name of your Wi-Fi, right? Wi yes. So you turn on Wi-Fi, you locate the SSID, you enter the wireless password, and then you verify the internet connection, all right? That's, that's the, those are the steps. So when you're reviewing this chapter, look, you know, try to, try to answer the questions and then confirm the answers, all right? You confirm the answers. Okay, let's look at a, 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 a possible question in the, in the test. Uh, what does SSID stands for? Say it again. Do you think the uh, that could be a possible question on, for the CompTIA test? Uh, what does yes. SSID stand for? Yes, and you know what it is, right? It's right here. It is service set identifier. So if, the, if, if you see the question, then it's right there. Service set identifier, SSID. All right, that's it. Okay, uh, chapter three. So let's go back to the questions. All right, uh, something here that we missed. Let's go back to question 10. 
Question 10. Uh, Arch, this question is for you. Question 10. What am the best to have data stolen from your device with Bluetooth connection? Yeah, if somebody uses your Bluetooth connection to steal your data, okay. what's it Blue, called? Blue jacking? Uh, yeah. Blue jacking? Yeah. No. Maybe it's like uh, something uh, maybe Something bearing. Like hijack. <laughs> like hijacking, right? Yes. <laughs> Blue jacking. I like that. Like when you hijack a plane. Yeah. Okay. So let's see, let's see, let's see. I don't know if, let's look at blue jacket and see what that means. So let's see blue jacket. Okay, so look at this section here. Um, all right, so right here, right here tells us this section. When Bluetooth is enabled, you may be vulnerable to blue jacking or blue snarfing. Blue jacking or blue snarfing. What is blue jacking? Blue jacking is sending messages to your device. So somebody's going to send messages to your device, right? Kind of like trying to spam you, you know, like when you get email spam. So somebody's going to use your Bluetooth to send you messages. That is blue jacking. But the other one, Blue snarfing, right? Blue snarfing right here uh, occurs when somebody connects to your device without your knowledge and has access to all your data, all your pictures, everything on your device. So blue jacking and blue snarfing, they mean two different things. So you've got to know what those are. So blue jacking is they're sending you spam messages to your phone and blue snarfing, um, they can connect to your phone. So which is more, which is more harmful or dangerous? Arch? Blue snarfing. Blue snarfing, right? Yeah. Because they can connect to your phone and see all your stuff. Um, so, so what do you think? If you want to prevent blue jacking or blue snarfing, what do you think you can do, Arch? What's, what's an option? Uh, we can uh, uh, make it off Bluetooth. Whenever exactly. we want, we can off. That's right. So you can turn, you can, dis right, it's called disable, right? You can disable Bluetooth when you're not using it. Right, disable it on your phone, on your camera, on your, you know, a lot of your devices, just make sure it's turned off, right? Um, so that you don't get all this blue jacking or like Anu said, hijacking on your phone, all right? So back to the question there, question 10. So what's the answer? Loose, loose nothing. So D. Blue D. D. What term refers to having data stolen from your device via Bluetooth connection? Blue snarfing. Blue snarfing. What is the blue snarfing? I don't think it exists. It's not. A, it doesn't exist. Let's let's see if it exists. I don't think there's anything like blue surfing. Oh. Blue surfing is when you go to, when you go to the beach with your surfboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah it looks when like you go that. To the beach. To the blue waters. So let's see. I don't know what that is. I don't think there's anything like that. Yeah, it's not a, it doesn't, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a thing, right? It would be a nice name for a, an event in Hawaii. There you go, right? You go to one of, you go to those tourist attractions in Hawaii and say, I want a blue surf. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's keep going. Um, and Juman, number 14. You want to enable backup of your new iPhones. Which two options do you have? Just two. You want to enable backups of your new iPhones. Which two options do you have? Enable yeah, so what is backup, right? 
So what is backup? You want to, like we said, right? You want to back up your phone, your storage, storage. Storage. Uh, All right. I drive, I cloud, I tunes, I backup. Uh, I cloud and I backup, maybe B or B and D. Okay, uh, well, Ling, you have an iPhone, right? Yeah. So what's the correct answer here? I don't know. I iTunes. What? iTunes and iCloud. You have an iPhone, you Come on, Ling. <laughs> Do you use your iPhone? Do you use your iPhone? Yeah, I use, but so I'm is... nervous. I never think about this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, maybe Ling never need to back up. <laughs> oh, you don't need to back up. Okay, so let's look at so let's look at what these options are. Uh, your iPhone. I cloud and I backup. I think. No. Nope. I turn. I cloud and I don't. Yeah, I cloud and I turn. I backup on my phone. All right, so let's see. Two option there. Uh, okay, uh, one second here. All right, uh, we're gonna see down here. Okay, let's just go to, let's just go here to. Yeah, iTunes app. Okay. All right, so right. Here, it says if you are using iOS right here, come on, all right. If you're using iOS, that's you're using an iPhone, right? You get to the iTunes, iTunes app store uh, by tapping the app store. Okay, well, let's, let's just, we'll try to look at the backup, right? So let's keep going here. Okay, right here. Okay, this is it. Right here. Actually, if we go if we go all the way up here, we see everything up here. Right. So, the first thing is you can access your files online or from your device. The second is that it provides a backup of your files, right? A backup of your files right here. This is about the iPhone, a backup of your files in case you need to restore your device. Ideally, you may never need a second option, but having backups of your important data is always important. iPhones and iPads can sync to iTunes. So, Link, there's something called iTunes on your desktop or computer or to the iCloud. Oh. So now you know. <laughs> Are you happy? Thank you. <laughs> I'll send you my bill. You have to give me your address so I can send you my bill to your house. One hundred dollar, right? <laughs> this, is, this this part is not it's not part of the course. This is separate. So anything separate, you have to I have to bill you differently. Okay. So iTunes um, or the iCloud. Uh, it says on the device. If you look right here, uh, how do you get to how do you get on the on your device? You can go to settings. Go to your account, go to iCloud or settings, then go to iTunes and the App Store. And on your and on your phone or your laptop, you get to, you know you you have all the settings of how to get there, right? So when you have a device, it's a good idea to know how to use the device so you can benefit from it, right? You pay all this money for it, and you don't know what it does. Strange. I, I think a better is to search the Google. You, 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 you expensive. <laughs> yeah, if you don't know, just Google everything, right? <laughs> well, when you get to the exam, there's no Googling during the exam. Okay. <laughs> when you do the CIE exam, that, also, you have I to can know. ask you. <laughs> oh, you can ask me, right? Okay. Well, okay. Cool. So back to the question. So, Anjuman, let's try again. Question 14. You want 
to enable backup of your new iPhone, these two options do you have? Uh, iTunes one and uh, iCloud. Easy, right? Very easy. Okay. Next question. Made. No, actually, let's go to Couch. Couch has been hiding all day, so now we let's go to Couch. Okay. Couch. Question fifteen. Uh, a place maker is an example of what type of IoT device? Uh, okay. So first of all, what is the pacemaker? Couch. Uh, it's like a um, the device using for the patient for make a heartbeat support for the heartbeat. Yeah. When a patient has a heart problem, uh, they use a pacemaker. All right. Yeah. So we don't even have to look at the chapter, right? What's the answer here? A medical device. Is it an IP camera? It's a medical device, right? It's a medical device. So when we look at medical, when we look at um, IoT devices, uh, let me see. When we look at different categories of IoT devices, uh, where is it? Okay, so. Um, Let's give you different options here. All right, so you have different IoT devices, Internet of Things devices. You have um, some that are used in the household at home. You have household devices. Yes. Uh, things like we looked at it, right? I mean, yes. some people have, you know, your your TV, computers, some toasters. Yeah. And Kyle, you have a toaster at home? Also, I have a cooker, smart cooker, <laughs> like from what's that uh, instant pot. <laughs> you have a smart cooker. So you just put the food, it just cooks the food for you and it brings the food to the dining table, right? <laughs> yes. Wow. You just say, um, I want pit I want a um, pasta. It just boom, just make the pasta for you, boom, 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 right? Yeah. But but I mentioned that app. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, so these devices, all IoT devices, um, have wireless capabilities. Yes. You can even have an app for it, yeah. right? You can have an app on your phone, you know, and all kinds of, you know, you can control it yeah. um, wirelessly, right? So, they're part of what you call a smart home. Sometimes you have light bulbs, so you have all these household devices, right? You also have um, entertainment systems. Uh, your TV, on your TV, you can watch Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, everything on your TV, right? Yeah. Uh, you can record all kinds of stuff on your TV. Uh, that's a Roku. Uh, this was actually, I, I, we had a Roku, like the first Roku we had, it. we still have it up in, a, in the house, but I don't even use it anymore, <laughs> right? Uh, but that's a Roku. All right, then you have heating and cooling. So for your heat and your, you know, temperature, you have the Nest or you have the Ring, different types of IoT devices, yeah. right? Uh, you have IoT home appliances. Like you said, you have a, cook, a stove or a cooker. You have toasters, toasters and blenders, things like that, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, look at this part here. It says um, you can have it automatically add milk to the grocery list on your smartphone. So your refrigerator, right, will send information to the app on your phone and then just send it to Stop and Shop and Stop and Shop will deliver the food to your house. You don't even have to do anything. Wow. You just, you just sit at home and the apps are... Do Alex, right? You just sit down at home, and your refrigerator is doing all the work for you. Alex? 
Uh, I don't know. Maybe it would yeah. work, but I'm, I think I'm too old style to believe on that. I like to open the yourself. Writing on a piece of paper and uh, I make my shopping list like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And besides, I mean, you, it's, you have to go out of the house, right? You have to go out, enjoy the weather, and see other people. You can't just sit down at home and say the app is going to do everything for me, right? I mean, you have to interact with, with the world. All these crazy apps, right? Anyway, you have um, IoT devices that are security systems, right? Uh, you have different ones here: Adobe Home Security, ADT, Simply Safe. They're all uh, IoT devices. Let's see, Simply Safe. All right. So also things like this you might have at home all kinds of security devices that are going to set your alarm and all that stuff, right? Makes it easy for you to do stuff. Okay, so back to that question. Um, so, so there are different IoT devices. You have medical devices, you have home appliances, security cameras, um, and stuff like that. So a pacemaker, that's suddenly a medical device, all right? All right, next question here. Alex, this is for you. Which of the following accurately describes what airplane mode does on an iPhone? Turn off the Wi-Fi connection, turn off the Bluetooth connection, turn off the cellular connection, turn off all wireless connection. I'd say D. Turn off all wireless connections. Well, we have to look at the settings um, on an iPhone, airplane mode. All right, so right here, talks about, all right, so you have, so the kind of connections you have, or should I say the settings, you have the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, airplane mode. So let's see, it says using, I, using the airplane mode, right? Um, it says right here, airplane mode isn't as much about setting up connections as it is about disconnecting. So basically it says when you set up, when you, when you enable airplane mode, right, what does it do? It disables, it shuts off all your wireless connections, everything. Now, what is airplane mode? Actually, if you travel, right? Has anybody traveled on a plane in the last six months? No. Anybody traveled on a plane? Last six months, no. Okay, has anyone never traveled on a plane? Like you have never, you always go on a bicycle. Okay, so we have all been on the plane at least once, right? So when you're on a plane, you know how it is, the pilot is going to, or the, uh, the attendants are going to tell you, shut off your phone. Because they don't want inter interference with your phone and the, the, all the devices on the plane. You don't want to cause any trouble. So airplane mode is going to shut off everything so there's no interference with your phone and the plane for security reasons, right? stuff like that. So basically that's what it is. Airplane mode, you basically use that in the airplane. But you can use it anywhere. But once you set your phone to airplane mode, everything goes off. All right, so if we go back to the question, Alex, what, what was your answer before? Turns off all wireless connections. All right, so turns off. Oh. No, Not I didn't that say All that. Wild. The, other one, the other one, right? This one, D. D. Yeah, D. Yeah. All right, turns up all wireless connections when you're in airplane mode. All right, so we have to review. You guys, you, you got to review the chapter so you can see the details, right? 
What happens when you use your phone? Okay, right here, next question. Anu, this is for you. Number okay. 17. Okay, which IoT device is typically paired with security systems? Home appliance, IP camera, modern car, thermostat. Which IoT device is typically paired with security system? Yeah, so if you have a security system at home, like we said, like, you know, simply say for ABT, any of these guys, right? So is it a car? Do you connect a car to a security system? Do you connect your thermostat to a security system, your camera, or a home appliance? Home appliance? Home appliance. Yeah. Couch, you think it's home appliance? Camera? I think it's IP it's camera. Camera? Yeah, IP, IP camera. Why would, you, why would you connect a camera to a security system? Because I have an IP. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, all right. Well, let's see the answer. All right, Number it doesn't 17. matter. I, I, I just look at it. They have IP. What's the answer? Number 17. So it's... See? So video IP. is a key component. IP cameras allow you to capture video as part of a security system. Okay, there you go. <laughs> So you're right. So let's see what an IP camera looks like. An IP camera. Okay. All right. So it's like, uh, you know, the camera that you find, you know, for, you know, you find them around on the street, you find them in the convenience store, in the building, right? For, to monitor the building right so this camera can be can be controlled with an app or wirelessly right for example you can have a camera at home and if you go to school or you go to work you can see what is happening in your house right may do you have a camera watching your daughter your daughter no. when she's bouncing around the house do you watch her from when you're in the store no i don't have such a big house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so what he's saying is, for example, you know, you can have a camera, um, you know, it does some security work for you when you're not there. So you don't have to be there physically. You can watch it on your phone. Let's yeah. say you travel. Mm -hmm. Let's say you travel and you install the IP camera so you can see what is happening in your building or, you know, maybe outside your house. Yeah, maybe right. later I, I, I want to set one, yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah, so that's what that is. Uh, IP cameras, uh, it's used for security. So that's the answer there. All right, let's go back to chapter three. Okay, so the answer there will be the IP camera, right? Question 17, camera B. Okay. Uh, how about question 18? Bonsu, are you still there? Yes. You need to find, All right, question 18. You need to find a new productive app for your Android-based uh, table. Where should you look? So when you want to download apps mm -hmm. on an Android phone, where, where do you go to download an app? Google Play or Google Drive? Google, Google Play. Google Drive? Mm -hmm. Google Play. Google Play. She said Google Play. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Bantu, which icon here is for Google Play? Is it at the top, at the bottom, to the left, to the right side? The Google Play icon. 
on the uh, on the second row dot Google. This is the Google uh, Play icon. The, this is browsing. Uh, the last last. This one here. In the middle. This one here. Yes. Okay, that's it. That's it. So that's the Google Play icon. No, no. When you want to. What? No. Nobody said no. Okay. So that's the Google Play icon. When you want to uh, download an app on your phone, on your Android phone, then you go and look in Google Play. How about on an i on an iPhone? When you go and look for. When you go, if you want to download on an iPhone. App Store. What? App Store. App Store. App Store, exactly. Yeah, you go to the app. You go to the App Store uh, to download on an iPhone. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, we got another question here. Abu Sayy, this is for you. Uh, Number nineteen. Can Xbox on X is an example of which type of device? App Store or Xbox? This may be server. An Xbox One is a server. So here's an Xbox One, Abu Sayyid. So this is an Xbox One here. Is this a server? It's a it's a gaming console. Oh. Abu Sayed, Xbox is a server? No, it's a gaming. Uh... So is it A, B, C, or D? C, gaming console. Hey. All right, so gaming consoles, right? I mean, we should know what gaming consoles are, right? You have a, a lot, so many different types of gaming consoles. Consoles. So here are different examples of different gaming consoles, right? Xbox, Switch, all right? Uh, Nintendo Switch, um, Microsoft Xbox, PlayStation, PlayStation, exactly. Yeah, the middle one. So you have this one. I love it. Which one? The middle one here. Yeah. That's the PlayStation. Yeah, this is the PlayStation Five. Okay. Now I know where Alex spends all his time on the PlayStation. I don't the have the five yet, but I have a and, and the waterfall. Four. What, Alex, what? Uh, I don't have the PlayStation 5 yet. I'm on the fourth. Okay. When you save up enough money, you can buy the next one, right? Okay. So these are gaming consoles, all right? So the Xbox One is an example of a gaming console. Okay, Lynn, last question for you. Rebecca wants to go to get a copy of the next, next game she heard about for her iPad. Where should she to find and download iTunes? That's the question we just talked about, right? Yes. Where do you get your where do you get games and stuff for your iPad? Mm. All right. Mm. So you said it's what? Google iTunes. Play? iTunes. iTunes? All right, so let's go back to iTunes here. All right, so iTunes. Where is it? All right, so if you're using iOS, you can get to the iTunes. All right, so right here, 
the Google Play right here, I think, right? Google Play App Store is where you go to get Android-based devices, right, for the different apps and for, for, the, for the iPhone, you get, where is it? iTunes App Store, right? Yeah. So the iTunes App Store, yeah. the app will look similar to the one shown. There are multiple categories for free and paid apps, and you can search. Okay. All right, I think that's where we go about iTunes there. Yeah, the iTunes and okay, so the iTunes and the App Store. Okay. Mm -hmm. iTunes and the App Store. So right here it says that the option we have is iTunes, iApps, iPlay. There's nothing like iApps or iPlay, right? iTunes. All right. So we need to review this chapter, right? So we have a good idea of uh, what is asking us uh, to do and to know. So here are the here are the highlights, the summary, the summary of the chapter. Uh, it says understand the role of servers and workstations. We talked about that already, right? Servers hold your files so that you can share with your colleagues, with your coworkers. Um, you can access resources that you don't have on your own computer, right? You can access resources that you don't have on your own computer. Your workstation is where you do your work, right? Just like your laptop or your computer at a desk, that is your workstation, all right? So a server can hold multiple files and Lots of servers, different parts of the world, is what we refer to as the cloud, right? So we looked at a few pictures of uh, cloud. Uh, where is it? We looked at it here. Cloud center, like a cloud center, for example. In a cloud center, uh, like we say, you're going to see lots and lots and lots of servers right in a in a cloud center lots and lots of servers in a cloud center so the cloud is not something floating around in the sky it's a physical place but you have a lot of places like that you might have a google cloud facebook twitter the school the cloud everywhere cloud centers or you can call them data centers right, all around the world. Uh, next one here says, understand the unique methods that you can use um, to interact mobile devices. Your finger, your thumb, you scroll up and down, scroll up and down, right? Um, so right here, it has this um, activities. You can tap, swipe, pinch. Tap, swipe, Pinch. How do you pinch? How do you pinch on your phone? Pinch. Maybe for zooming? With your two fingers. Right? With your two fingers is how you pinch on the phone, like that. See that? That's pinch. You want to zoom out? You want to enlarge a picture, you pinch. You grab it and pinch on your phone. Right? Pinch. That's how you do it, right? Pinch. Okay. Or you tap. If you tap on it, boom, boom, you can enlarge it or sometimes, right? Or you scroll up, down. Scroll up, down. So those are activities that you used to interact with your phone. Know how to configure external connections on your mobile phone. If you read the details, you can go, you can set up your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, your airplane mode. All right. 
know how to turn on and off Wi-Fi on your phone, know where to get new apps for your devices, right? For iOS devices, use iTunes. For Google Play, uh, for Android devices, right? Understand the purpose of a gaming console for games, right? Now, we'll say something here. Look at this part. Uh, right here. It says, gaming consoles are primarily used to play video games, but you can also connect to the internet and play some movies sometimes, right? Some of those things, you can use them to play movies. Um, all right. Know some common consumer applications of the Internet of Things, IoT, home-based medical devices, security systems, entertainment systems, um, smart cars, smart toasters, refrigerators. They all use their IoT devices that use Wi-Fi, and some of them have apps on your phone that you can control, right, using Wi-Fi and Internet connection. IoT devices use the internet when they have all this communication, right? When we talk more about networking, we're going to talk about IoT devices and how IoT devices are affecting our ability to network. But we'll get to that at a different point. Know some common commercial uses for the IoT, like I said, medical devices, manufacturing, transportation, infrastructure, they all benefit from IoT enabled technology. So you gotta look closer at the chapter, right, and see the details here. All right. Any questions? I'll let you go to question for me. Not at this moment. Okay. Ling, you got a question for me? Frozen. Ling is frozen. Hmm. Okay. Bonte, you have Hello. Bonte, you have a question for me? <laughs> Hello. Hello, Ling. You're frozen. Oh, Ling, okay. you're frozen? <laughs> yeah, you're no longer frozen. You're okay now. Okay. All right, anybody got a question on this chapter? No question. Okay, let's go back to chapter two. Uh, we have a few more minutes. Something we didn't cover there, which might be helpful uh, for, the, for the exam, at the very bottom of the page. So if we go to those review questions, actually, at the very bottom, there's some questions there that he asked us about uh, let's see. I think it was on the part of, where's the summary? Okay, let's look at the summary part here, just to cover a few things that we might have missed in that chapter. Okay, so we talked about this part here. It says, giving a scenario understand how to install and configure common peripherals, right? The steps will vary, but we mentioned installing drivers, right? And, you know, all these things we're talking about, these are things that might be helpful to you on a job, knowing how to do some of these things. What's the correct cable to use for that device, right? Um, What's the correct, you know, kind of connection or connector? That's what we did in this chapter two. Um, so drivers, like we talked about printers, if you're going to install a printer, right, and you don't have the driver, let me give you an example. Let me show you something here. So if you go to your, if you do a search on your computer and do a search for driver, Right, just to really set for driver on your computer. If you have a Windows, do a set for driver 
And I want to show us something which might be helpful to you. So driver and go to the device manager here, right? Said, device manager. Yeah, do a search at the bottom of your computer do for driver. You see driver and then click on device manager. It's going to bring you here um, to this panel. Now this panel, I don't know if you guys can see it, it's pretty small. Let me use my magnifier to make it a bit bigger for you. All right, are you able to see it? Yeah. Okay. So you can see there that this is your, this is where you have your drivers. The drivers for, um, you know, the different installations of your computer. For example, if I look at the keyboard, right? If we go right here to keyboard, right? If you go to the keyboard right here, it will show you if you expand, if you expand the arrow, it will show you the keyboards you have on your computer. If I click on the first one here and double click, it's going to bring up these properties. Okay? These properties. Now, what happens here, if I go to driver, can you guys, do you guys have this on your computer? Alex, are you seeing this part? Okay. So if you go to driver, now you see that it allows you to do some things here, right? For example, if my keyboard has a problem, you know, for some reason, right? I have, here's my keyboard. Let me see if I can show you guys my keyboard. That's my keyboard. It's a little bit of a fancy keyboard, right? Yeah, it's ergonomic. Ergonomic, exactly. It's an ergonomic keyboard. It has, uh, um, it has the pad. It has a pad right here. So my wrist can rest on the pad. Very soft. Wow. Right okay. here. And you can see how the keys are, right? The different keys. Okay. It has the shape here, the V shape right here. Mm -hmm. So you can see that right there. Oh. Different mm. keys. So it looks a little bit different from regular keyboards. Yes. This is um, my first time seeing this. I can sell it to you for $1,000. Ah, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then my mouse, right? My mouse is also an ergonomic mouse, right? Okay. Yeah. Adi so, uh, uh, Brahmsen, are these expensive? I don't know the cost of these. One no, it's, not, no, it's not expensive at all. It's not expensive. This keyboard is about forty bucks, forty dollars. Okay. Maybe that's expensive. Maybe that's expensive. too expensive. Yes, yes. Yeah. This mouse is about. No, I was kidding. I was just kidding. It's not that. Ex it's not one thousand at all. It's about it's about thirty, forty, fifty dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And also the mouse. But a regular a regular keyboard is about ten dollars. Okay. Right? Uh -huh. But if you a regular keyboard. But if you want, you know, okay, let's let's look at something here. Let's look at this. So let's say uh keyboards, right? Let's see what it costs. All right, so let's let's do some shopping for a regular keyboard. A regular keyboard is fifteen dollars, all right, twenty dollars. But if you want to go for an ergonomic keyboard, so let's say all right, so now look at that, right? It can be pretty expensive, maybe not this expensive, but you can see fifty nine dollars. So this is like mine, kind of like mine. this is no, this is like mine. Yeah. Yeah, this is like mine. So if you want an ergonomic keyboard that makes your wrist, right, your wrist more comfortable and everything, then you spend a little bit extra box, right? So back to the driver anyway. So if you go to your device manager, if your keyboard has a problem or your mouse or something that is installed on your computer, you know, your keyboard, your monitor, um, your printer right here, it's all there. Or your mouse, right? So you double click it 
It's going to bring you here to the driver. Now, I can decide to uninstall that device or update the driver. Let's say something is going wrong with the, you know, it doesn't work very well. I can decide to update the driver and automatically it will look for a driver. Can you guys hear me? You will yeah. look for a driver and install the driver for me, All right? So um, some little bit of, um, you know, tech, tech troubleshooting that you can do for yourself. If you have a device that is not working very well on your computer, you can go into your device manager and then look for the device and maybe update the driver. That's an option. Something else about your printers, your printer on your computer, your printer. So if I go to control panel, these are important things to know you know, if you work in a in an office, right? Some of this knowledge might be useful on the job. So if I want to see, okay, what printer do I have installed on my computer? What do I do? You have to go to, you see right here, this section that it says hardware. If you view the devices um, and printers on your computer, view devices and printers, you can see that I have a lot of stuff going on here. Now, um, can you tell which printer that I actually have here, which is my default printer? When I print, where does it go to automatically? Can you, can you tell? Anybody? Do I have a default printer? It's really as a deck professional. This one right here? Yeah. No. This icon, it only shows you that I'm sharing. I'm yeah. sharing this printer. Yeah. That's not the default printer. The default printer is the printer it goes automatically. So, for example, if I right click here, all right, uh, if I right click here and I go to, um, set as default printer you see this options when you so let's say you're sharing a printer if you're sharing a printer with some co-workers or if you want to if you want to share a printer with co-workers right um everybody in that office has to set the printer as a default printer default means when you print it goes to that printer you don't have to look for the printer like you open up your computer and say, where is my printer? You set it here. So if you click on set as default, right, it says okay. Now you see the check mark here. If you set the printer as a default, this is gonna become the automatically, when I print, right, it's gonna to go to this printer. This is just an example. This is just an example, right? Let's say I open up Microsoft Word and I want to print something and I say, um, hello world, for example. See, I want to print this here, right? I want to print this smiley face here. You guys see the smiley face? Yes. You're not seeing this? Yes. yes okay. So if I want to, if I want to print this, right? I go to file. I go to print, and you can see that by default, right? By default, because I selected the default printer in my control panel, it's going to go to that printer automatically, right? So sometimes, if you are in an office and somebody is trying to print, and they say to you. Every time I try to print, I have to look for the printer. Then you tell them, you need to set up the printer as a default printer, because you might have a lot of printers. You need to know which printer do you use all the time. So you set it as a default printer. 
so you don't have to search for it, right? Uh, one more thing, when you have a network printer, I think we talked about that, right? A network printer. So you can have a local printer, and you can have a network printer. So a local printer is what? May what's a local printer? A printer that is directly connected to your computer. Yeah. So you maybe you have a printer on your desk, right? And you connect it using a serial, a serial cable, right? So a local desktop printer. Printer. All right. So. Yep. So, for example, you might be at home, and you have a. There's a lot of activity going on in this house. Okay, let's use this picture we saw here. All right. So, say you're at home, right? You're at home, and you have a printer right there next to you. It, it's directly connected to your computer, right? That's a local printer. But when you have a network printer, right? So let me sh just show you, for example, right, how that works. So let's say right here, I want to, let's say I want to connect a network printer, right? Just look at this here. So I go up here to add a printer. So I go to add a printer. Now, this printer may not be on my desk, maybe it's a shared printer with my coworkers, right? So I'm gonna say here, the printer is not listed. I don't have the printer here, so I click that. Now you're gonna see this options, right? Setting up a printer is a very important thing that you do in an office. So, are you guys following this or are you confused or are you lost? No. Okay. So when I click on the printer is not listed, it's gonna give me this option. Now look at these options here, right? The first option is my printer is a little older. Help me find it. The second option is select a shared printer by name. If you have a shared printer with a name, you can type it in there. But generally, what we do is when you want to when you want to set up a network printer, a network printer, you select a TCP IP address printer, an IP address, an IP printer, IP printer. Right? That is the printer that is on the network. It has an IP address, just like your computer has an IP address. A printer has an IP address. So, for example, if I click that option and I click next, well, I have to know what the IP address is of where the of where the printer is. Now we talked about servers, right? Servers help you to share files. Well, you also have what you call a print server. You have a print server. Print server. The job of a print server is to share printers, share a printer, right? So a print server will help multiple coworkers share a printer. That's what the print server does. Not a local printer by your computer desk, a print server will help you share. So if I have a print server in the office, right? I need to know what is the IP address of that print server so I can connect to it. Remember, it's not, there's no cable. It's not attached to your computer. So you can't just, you know, plug it to your computer. It's on a server. It's a different place. So the way to connect to it is to know the IP address. So let's say the IP address is 110 dot 34 dot 2 dot 12 
right? IP addresses are automatically generated by your ISP, your internet service provider. So the internet service provider will have given that print server an IP address. So the IT people need to know the IP address so they can connect all the employees to that print server using the IP address. When I worked as an, as an IT uh, professional, I used to do this all the time, all the time. You're trying to connect everybody to the print server so they can print. Because in the office, we had maybe five printers for everybody. So you had to print to a shared printer. You're not gonna buy a printer for every single member of staff. That's crazy, right? So everybody has to share a printer, but you have to know how to connect them to the printer. So, so if this was the printer, for example, and I put in the correct IP address, I click on, this is just a test, right? So it's not gonna work. Um, so it's just gonna, it's gonna try to find that printer. If that printer is properly set up, then it's gonna to connect to it. And the next time I want to print, I can easily print to that print server. Because now that will be my default printer. Remember, it's not a local printer that is connected to my, if I, let me show you something here quickly. Um, right here, uh, network printer IP. So this might be an example of what you see. Uh, the, well, printer, let's see if I can find it. Sometimes you might see the settings of a network printer, or maybe at a different point we might talk about it. I'm not seeing it here. I'm not seeing it here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I said in, um, maybe that. Oh, I'm not seeing what I'm looking for here. There's sometimes you can see an actual printer and you see the settings to just show you how you're going to the, actually, I'll really, oh, have a configure network printer, configure settings, configure. Setting panel. Maybe we'll look for you at a different point and I can show you uh, what that is. Oh, actually, I think I found it here. So this might be an example. Okay. Yeah, sometimes it has an actual, like a little screen, like a little screen on the printer itself. And you just, you, just, you know, you just you know, push all the settings. Like, have you been to, um, have you been to Staples to print before, anybody? Like when you want to print a lot of stuff, you go to Staples, nobody has gone to Staples to print? Well, they have all these huge printers, right? And you just click, you just click on it, right? Like this, you click on it to do, to set it up. Anybody been to Staples to print? Yes. Okay. All right, so yes, I so you're going to see. This way. All right, so you're going to see on on the printer anyway. You're going to see the different options to set it up. Okay, so but just just realize that when you're setting up a local printer, mm. you just connect the USB to your computer. But when you're setting up a a network printer to be shared by the whole office, it's a little bit of a different step and. Uh, the book mentions it. Uh, if you look into this in this chapter, where it talks about, you see that's the, that's the information there, right? In the book in chapter two, about how you set up a network printer, and it, or a web-based printer. It gives you the examples in the book. So I just thought I'd mention it to us because these are things that are useful to know or setting. All right. Okay, that's all we got. So let's do the attendance.
and we can wrap this up.